factor each polynomial. If the polynomial cannot be factored, write prime. So we have x cubed minus 400. I look at that, I'm like, well, it's a difference, difference of squares, difference of cubes, we just did go over. Um, x cubed is a perfect cubed, right? It's x cubed. But what about 400? I'm pretty sure 400 is a perfect square. Um, you can do the cube root of 400, right? You could be able to do that um, in Desmos or on your calculator. Let me see if I can get it on Desmos. So on Desmos, this is something you might not have noticed, um, but when you click your little keyboard at the bottom, like you can see the square root button, but there is no cube root button. If you click functions, there's lots of other stuff over here. There's trig functions, um, statistics, different distribu distributions, dis yeah. <laughs> um, and then miscellaneous. Miscellaneous is, you know, rounding or greatest common denominator, which is interesting. That's a lot log logarithms, lots of stuff that um, we might do later. But if you notice here, there's this button that has a root but it has the n, meaning that you can put any kind of root that you want. All right? It gives you that little cursor now. So I would put a 3 there to tell me that I want to take the cube root of 400. And we can see that the cube root of 400 is not a perfect cube root. Right? 400 would be like approximately 7.368 dot 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 cubes. So this is not perfect. It's not a perfect cube, which means that we can't use the difference of cubes technique, right? And there's no greatest common factor. X cubed and 400 don't have anything in common. Um, it's not going to be a quadratic form. We can't group it because it's just two terms. So in this case, our answer would actually be prime. Now, if we try the second one, 24x to the fifth plus 3x squared y cubed. You might look at it and be like, well, it's not a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes. You can't group it. It's not a quadratic, but it, it does have a GCF. That should be the first thing that you look for no matter what when you're factoring. Um, 24 and 3 both have 3 in common, so I can factor that out. And if we look at the variables, they also have some x's in common. They specifically have 2 x's in common or x squared. So if I factor out 3x squared, 24 divided by 3 is 8. x to the 5th divided by x squared is x cubed. Plus 3 divided by 3 is 1. I don't need to write the coefficient of 1, though. x squared divided by x squared, that's gone. I do have y cubed, though, left over. So now I have 3x squared times 8x cubed plus y cubed. Now, you still want to look at what you have left over after factoring out the greatest common factor to see if you can factor it more. And you might be able to, because this is a cube, this is a cube. What about 8? Is 8 a cube? 8 is 2 cubed. So this would be 2x cubed and y cubed. So we can do the sum of cubes formula, right? You take the cube root of each, which we have already, 2x plus y. They're going to still be adding, because it was originally adding. Keep that the same. And then we square the first term, so we're going to square 2x. Now it's the opposite sign here. You multiply the two terms together, and then you square the last term. And then don't forget about that greatest common factor of 3x squared that was out in the front. So we have 3x squared times 2x plus y times 2x squared, which would be 4x squared, right, square each of those, 2x times y, so negative 2xy, and y squared. Now we're not going to be able to factor what's inside of here anymore. Um, when you do a sum of cubes, that's pretty much all that you're going to be left with, but we were able to use two different factoring techniques, the greatest common factor and the sum of cubes factoring technique, and we did get it factored a decent amount.